in this example, we're going to go through um, a new company and um, through this demonstration, uh, learn how to determine pre-money valuation, post-money valuation, and also additional rounds of financing in situations where you may have an up round, a down round, and also a down round with anti-dilution provision uh, or food anti-dilution provision, as well as a partial anti-dilution provision, which is limited by a floor or minimum price. So first things first, this is day one. In day one, the company is started and it has two founders, uh, Janet and Steven. So there are no outside investors at this point. They uh, join together and become uh, founders. So they issue each other, they issue shares to each other to start this business. So Janet has 40,000 shares and Stephen has 10,000 shares. So we can compute what we call the caps table. The caps table is a, a nickname for capitalization table. For private equity firm, the caps table is very important. So to determine percentage ownership, we first have to figure out the total number of shares outstanding. So that's just the, to the total or the sum of the two. So right now, in the beginning, there are 50,000 shares outstanding. Uh, and to get the percentage ownership, we divide the number of shares by owner to the total. And we want to make sure that when we add up the two, or all the percentage ownership, we add up to one. So this is day one. Day one, when the company is founded, um, you have two owners, Janet and Stephen. Janet owns 80% and Stephen owns 20% of the firm. So remember once again, the percentage ownership is the key. Now let's assume that the company is doing well and they are now, and not, they are now ready to expand and they will need outside financing. So let's go to the next table. So they were, able to find a new investor. The new investor's name is Golden Beach Associate or GBA. They were negotiating with GBA and they and they decide and the terms that GBA wants is $750,000 in exchange for 60% of the firm post money. So the negotiation is always for post money. So first of all, uh, what can be negotiated and what cannot be negotiated? The number of shares outstanding is a given. Those are historic. Remember, 50,000 shares is what Janet and Stephen had given each other or given to themselves. So therefore, that is history. That's past. That is not going to change. Um, what can be negotiated is the amount of cash that they're willing to take and also the percentage ownership. The cash sometimes is also less negotiable because a a new company will only want to bring on investors if they need the money. So uh, they probably try to get as little money as they need. So this is probably the minimum that they are will, they need to raise. And the real negotiate point, negotiating point is what percentage of the firm are they selling? Uh, this is the formula that we saw earlier uh, in, the, uh, in the textbook. Um, and so the number of new shares is equal to current shares. So that's equal to current shares, 50,000 shares, times number of percent to be demanded by the new investor. So in this case is 60%, divided by one minus the 60%. So this will give us the number of new shares to be issued. So in this case, is 75,000 shares. So the market value, the new market value per share is the amount of cash needed. So in this case, that's $750,000 divided by the number of new shares issued. So number of new shares is 75,000 shares. So the new market value per, sh per share is $10. Now we can then compute, complete the caps table. So the number of shares for the founders, uh, Janet and Steven, is the same. So this is what we have from table from the last table. So we can reference what we had. So Janet is 40,000 shares and Steven is 10,000 shares. Golden Beach GBA, we just computed that. We're going to we're going to give them 70,000 75,000 shares. So now we can add up our new total number of shares is 125,000. 
and we can compute the caps table. So again, this is equal to the shares for each owner divided by the total. So you will see that, again, if you add this up, the ownership must add up to one. So let's look at what, look, what the caps table looks like versus before. Before, Janet owns 80% of the firm and Stephen owns 20%. After they raised money from GBA, Janet owned 32% and Stephen owns 8%. GBA owns 60% of the firm. That's a huge change. And the post money valuation in this case is equal to amount of cash needed. So that's $750,000 divided by the percentage ownership wanted by new investors. So that's 60%. So the post money valuation is $1.25 million. And the pre-money valuation is equal to post money valuation. So it's equal to $1.25 million minus amount of cash raise. Amount of cash raise is $750,000. So the pre-money valuation is $500,000. Notice that before they go to GBA for funds, they didn't really have a market value. Now, Janet and Stephen may look at this analysis and say, that's too much. They don't want to sell 60% of the firm. So what they can do is they can go back to GBA and negotiate. Now, there are not a whole lot of things they can negotiate, remember. So they need the $750,000. So what they need to do is convince GBA to take a smaller percentage. So instead of 60%, they may try to negotiate that down to 50%. Now GBA may counter negotiate. They may counter propose and say, well, this is a highly risky investment. If we, are, if we take 50%, then we may want an anti-dilution provision uh, in case the investment goes south. So those are things, those are, those are actually important terms of negotiation in uh, venture capital and also private equity. So let's take a look and say, and let's see, assume that GBA is willing to take a smaller percentage. What would that look like? So now let's move on to the next table. In this table, they're able to negotiate down to 50%. But in exchange, GBA demands an anti-dilution provision. So we can complete this the same way we've done before. The formulas are the same. So the number of new shares that they need is existing shares times the percentage divided by 1 minus the percentage that GBA wants. So now instead of um, uh, they only need to issue 60,000 shares. And the new market value per share is the cash that they raised divided by the number of shares. So it went from $10 a share to $15 per share. Now let's work on the caps table. Again, the number of shares for Janet and Stephen does not change. That comes from table one. So Janet still have 40,000 shares. Stephen still have 10,000 shares. GBA now will have 50,000 shares. That's what we just determined under this new term. And altogether, the company will now have 100,000 shares outstanding. And the percentage ownership in this case is very straightforward to compute. So they all have, uh, they, Janet will have 40%, Stephen will have 10%, and GBA will have 50%. Again, we want to add up the percentage of the caps table to make sure that we didn't make any mistake. And then we can also figure out the post money and pre money valuation. So the post money valuation is equal to the amount of cash needed. So that's $750,000 divided by the percentage ownership that we negotiated, which is 50%. So the company is worth $1.5 million post money valuation. Pre money valuation is post money valuation minus the amount of cash that you raise. So your pre money valuation is $750,000. So by negotiating down the percentage ownership, uh, Janet and Stephen were able to retain um, a larger portion of the firm. Now, uh, we'll end the video here. In the next video, we're going to go over what happened in an up round and in a down round and with anti-dilution provision and without anti-dilution provision.
see you soon.